everyone. I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to Does Orange Break Part 2. Today's video is sponsored by Melanie Mortensen, and we are going to use the Wilton Color Right Performance Color System to mix a couple different oranges and see if they will break into reds and yellows. The last time I tried to break orange food coloring, I mixed together McCormick's Red and McCormick's Yellow, which had a mixture of red number 40, red number 3, and yellow number 5 as the food coloring molecules. What's amazing about this color right system is that we have two different reds that each have a single color of red food coloring. The crimson base just has red number 40, and the pink base just has red number three. The true red base has a mixture of these red colors. And so we know some from some of our other dyeing experiments that the red three strike really, really fast to the yarn. And the red 40 takes a bit longer, but does in fact break as well if you're patient. Now, most orange food colorings aren't actually composed of a mixture of red and yellow, and therefore you wouldn't see a lot of breaking. Um, oranges are frequently composed of yellow number five, something that I only learned when I started trying to break orange food coloring. But I am not planning on using the orange that is in this system, um, but I am gonna use the yellow, which uh, has yellow number five um, versus yellow number six. Um, and so the two oranges that I'm going to mix today, I'm going to use yellow in both of them, and in one I'm going to use crimson, and in the other I'm going to use pink. Now the oranges that we're going to look at are not going to be identical or equivalent. I am just hoping to get something that is, that we look at and we say, okay, that's an orange. And I want to see how much slower the yellows absorb versus the different reds. Today we are going to dye two 100 gram skeins of Stroll fingering yarn. This yarn is a 25% nylon, 75% superwash merino blend that I use in many of my dyeing videos. I decided to use this yarn base, and not just because it's the yarn base that Melanie selected for her sponsored video, but I decided to use this for this experiment because we know that breaking can be a little more extreme on the superwash yarns versus the untreated wool. So if we're going to see any breaking, I'm more likely to see the colors separate here where we know food coloring will strike really, really fast versus the wool of the Andes base that I like to use a lot. I have pre-soaked these yarns in just plain tap water overnight and then I'm going to remove a lot of the excess yarn before we dip dye. So in my pot, I have eight cups of water, and I am going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar, approximately. It's possible I could start off with even less if I wanted to exaggerate the breaking, but uh, two tablespoons is kind of my standard, and so that's why. I went with that. This is only the second time that I have used the Color Right dyes. And I thought that it was worth peeking to see if there was a good orange recommendation that used pink um, on here. So the, the kit comes with some color recipes, but I didn't see a good orange recommendation that used pink but why would I when um, the kit contains an orange um, already? So let's start off with um, 10 drops of pink. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Okay, so I think that's closer to 15 drops of pink, maybe. I got a little excited. Um, let's do 10 drops of crimson. Um, right now, the pink is actually looking pretty orange. Um, 
I know that that is in part just my counter, but that's pretty funny. All right. Um, I may have added a little too much red over here, but let's add 20 drops of yellow to each. Stir this up. I'm not sure if I said, but I've got a third. Ooh, that's definitely an orange. Ooh, that's a. Oh, you can't really see my fork mark. That's a nice orange. I'm not. I don't remember if I said, but I started with a third of a cup of water in each of these cups. check that out these proportions are pretty good um, so I think I did what did I do 15 drops of pink 20 drops of yellow 10 drops of red 20 drops of yellow I think oh look 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 we already see some breaking on the paper towel Woohoo! that's awesome okay I am gonna go ahead and double the amount of dye that's in each of these so that way I have a lot of dye in my pot um, and then I will come back and we'll start dyeing. Let's start off with the color that I expect to break more. And this is gonna be our orange with the red number three in it. So I've just added the dye and I did briefly put the yarn through my salad spinner because I wanted to remove as much of the dye as possible. Ooh, that's a really, really pretty, pretty color. Okay, Red, soak up. Let's see. Still looking pretty orange in there. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I had too much dye. Whew. All right, uh, better add the end of this. All right, so we definitely, definitely have a gradient here. Um, and it struck really, really fast. But what I don't know is if 40 drops of yellow, of this yellow will end up looking kind of orange as well. So I was hoping that I would see like a clear something that I would be able to see. Yes, that's breaking. Um, and it's possible that maybe when we see it dry we'll see something that looks a little more obvious, but I don't know guys. But yeah, the water is basically clear already. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the pot for five minutes. Um, I'll reduce the heat though. But, <laughs> you know, we definitely have a gorgeous sunset colorway. Um, but yeah, what do you think? Do you think that that's broken? Or maybe we'll have to see, you know, around the Maybe we'll have to look around like the when it's dry and see if we see more pink um, in spots. But it looks like, you know, yellows just absorb super, super, super fast. Actually, maybe I really should have done this with untreated wool. Because <laughs> um, if I had used untreated wool, then um, maybe the maybe the yellows would have gone a bit slower as well. But anyway, I'm going to let this go for five minutes, and then I'll come back and take out the yarn. Five minutes have passed. All right, let's try my new, it's like my pasta spinning technique. These colors are so pretty. Actually, you know a spot where we might see some more breaking is within the bottom of the skein. But when it's cooled... I'll take a closer look at our yarn.
The pink halo is from the red number three, crashing out of solution from the acid. So if you've watched many of my dip dye thons, you'll remember that I like to use the same exhausted dye bath over and over as I'm dip dyeing multiple skeins of yarn. The water that remains behind after the dye is, has exhausted is still acidic enough to dye more yarn and it's just easy and convenient and works great. But I realize that for the sake of this experiment, it's worth starting off with some fresh water and vinegar. So I just added eight cups of water, two new tablespoons of vinegar, and I am going to heat this up. All right, this is our double portion with the crimson color. I'm gonna pour this in, stir it up. And let's grab our yarn and then start dip dyeing. I'm gonna reduce the heat a bit and then slowly go in and out. Now this time We've got the red number 40 along with the yellow. And we know from experience, and I might be going a bit too fast, yeah, that this red takes longer to absorb. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> hot on my fingers. See, I've just got the tiniest bit left not in. Um, that's still pretty orangey. I may have gone a bit too fast. Um, let's see. Okay, the color is getting pretty pale now, so I'm going to add the remaining in. Huh, that might actually be a little yellowish, but look at that. The red versus the orange. I really might need to do a control at some point of just the yellow to see how orange uh, that looks on its own. And there's definitely some yellow behind. If you look at the bottle of yellow, it looks a little orangish. So I don't know. All right, I'm going to let this go for five minutes and then we'll come back and look at the yarn. First, uh -huh. here's my, yeah, we have exhausted all of the dye. Someone once asked me why I wait to exhaust the dye, and you don't really need to. I just like to, um, and actually you'll see that there is still some color in the pot this time. You don't have to at all, I just like to. Um, I like to get as saturated a color as I can. Um, so this one definitely reads as an orange gradient, but I do, I don't know. Right, and the camera, it's certainly looking like there's more red on one side than the other. But anyway, oh, now I've got to get it off my tongs. Um, I'm going to let these cool, and then I will come back to wash our yarns. So I added this yarn to the wash and I realized I wasn't filming, so whoops. Um, but I added just some liquid dish soap to the pot and we're rinsing the yarn. We have a little bit of some yellow bleeding, but I will continue to rinse this yarn until the water runs clear. And just to show this, is the yarn that we did with the pink and this is the yarn that we did with the crimson. They look, and all things considered, pretty similar, but we definitely have some more yellow at the end of our first dip dyed stain. So once um, I rinse out all the soap and our water is running clear and, whew, since I switched to this soap, I'm getting a lot more bleeding than I'm used to. Interesting. Um, anyway, once the water is running clear, I will put this yarn through the salad center and hang it up to dry.
Now let's rinse our second yarn. I've added some of the dish soap. And here is our yarn. Let's see this time. Yeah, this time we're not really getting, oh, we're still getting some yellow, some yellow bleeding back out. Interesting. I wonder if this is because I used so much dye. Um, I haven't used the Color Right Color Performance System to dye yarn before. So, and I'm not used to seeing quite this much bleeding um, with food coloring. So, yeah, I think that I might have just oversaturated the <laughs> amount of dye that this yarn could take. And that's why I'm getting a lot of bleeding today. Um, cause wow, that's a lot, that's a lot of color. And again, I don't normally see very much bleeding at all with food coloring. So, and, it, and it's the same, it's the same dye molecules that I normally see. So anyway, I will keep rinsing until the water runs clear. Um, and then, yeah, and then into the solid center and we'll hang it up to dry. Here are the finished dried yarns, and I'm actually kind of amazed with how similar these oranges ended up being, even though one skein used red number three and the other used red number 40. Um, if I flip, ooh, actually, inside here, we see some of the color variation, and that's kind of nice. Um, do we have some breaking here? Again, it's kind of up to you. There are certainly areas where you can see that the red bound, but it is entirely possible that the yellow on its own is pretty orange. So, you know, this is definitely more yellow up here than it was down here, but it still does have an orange feel to it. So therefore, I don't really know. We have more of a yellow feel with the red number three than we do with the red number 40. Like as we got to the other end, we even have, you know, a tiny bit of white because we had soaked up most of the dye when I finally added the, the rest of the yarn to it. And because all of the color, um, since the red took longer to bind, it just took longer for it to get less red. So I think that these sunsets are beautiful, but does orange break? I don't know. <laughs> Melanie Mortensen, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. I hope that you are going to enjoy this yarn and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on whether or not the orange broke or if we just have a gradient of color. Someone recently asked me about the dye, getting dye under the ties and I just wanted to show that on um, this tie that was on the end that went into the yarn first we got really, really good um, depth of color around here. The main reason why we have some white around this tie is that this was the last part of the yarn to go into the pot, and so um, it didn't get as much access to the dye, and we ended up with a lot less color around this end than the, than the first end anyway. I'm still amazed how similar these yarns look. The red number three yarn is up here and the red number 40 yarn is down here. I would say that in looking at the tone, this one is a little brighter, a, maybe a little more neon, and this one is a little more of a burnt orange. But ultimately, they're really, really close. Thank you so much for watching this dyeing experiment. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and like the video if you enjoyed this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Thank you again, Melanie Mortensen, for sponsoring this video.